Okay, it is saying that we are live, and it's about uh, four minutes before the hour. And this is a special broadcast. I'm trying to do an audio test. And I've done a little bit of testing here locally, but there's no substitute for the doing an actual broadcast. And we'll see if anybody comes in to assist me with this. And we'll see what the audio sounds like. And I'm getting in the chat here to see what's going on. And this is a special broadcast. Okay, and I'll pause that. And we'll see if anybody comes in. Carlos is in the house. Carlos the man. And there's the, um, the device that I'm testing. That's the Asden uh, field mixer. And I'm just testing it out to see. Now, we, we still do not have a perfect audio situation here, just to give you the rundown on it. We've got the um, Beta 57A going into the Asden, and then the Asden is feeding through the line out. It is feeding to the input on the Roland. And the two problems with that is the Roland does not have XLR input, so we have to convert the XLR output on the Asden to RCA, which is not a ideal situation, but that's what we have to do because there is no input for XLR on the Roland. And then the other the uh, non-ideal situation is the fan blows right out the front of the Roland. Why the designers designed it that way and didn't have it blow out the back at least, and it's also very noisy. They could have come up with a fan that was quieter and that blew out the back and that would be fantastic, but they didn't, so this is what we're dealing with. But I did want to check and see if this uh, Asden is uh, performing um, at least as good as the Behringer audio mixer that I just replaced it with. And a couple of advantages to the Asden, it is a commercial grade piece of gear. It is a little bit smaller, and actually fair about fair amount smaller and not quite as complicated to use. So for somebody like Steve to use at his place and all, it'll be better for him to have a smaller unit and something that's a little bit easier to use. And this supposedly has very clean preamps in it. So let me know. Um, let's see. R. Wags says, um, I'm watching Frankenstein. Audio is excellent. The audio is excellent in Frankenstein? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Talk about multitasking. So, um, Carlos, what is your take? How does the audio sound on your end? And meanwhile, we'll do a quick time check. We're coming up on uh, coming up on the hour. We've got about another 50 seconds there as that clicks along. So we'll see what uh, what we shall see. And there's a little speck on my crystal that I got to try to clean off at some point there. It's kind of hard on these macro shots to get it just right. And uh, I'd like to get one more opinion on the audio before I uh, move on. And I did have a question. Somebody asked me on one of the videos about a uh, buying a spring drive. I think specifically a, a snowflake. If I don't, maybe they weren't talking specifically about the snowflake, but basically a spring drive. If they buy it and it uh, sounds a little crackly on the louder peaks, okay, Ray, in the house, on the louder peaks, okay. I've got the limiter. Let me see. Yeah, I've got the limiter on, and I'm trying to speak at a fairly consistent level, but... Um, Interesting, a little crackly on the louder peaks. I wonder if that's the cables going in. Interesting. I do not notice better audio. In fact, to me, sounds more metallic. Okay, there we go, more metallic. Durs in the house. A tan, a tan zeal needs a wrench. Tan zeal. Who, who does? Who? Who else knows tan zeal? Who else can vouch for Tanzeal? Uh, let's see. Durr sounds good. Uh, uh, sounds good. Let Craig know. Uh, Tanzeal. Uh, yeah, I saw your comment. Audio is good. 
Are you a member of any country clubs? Not, not currently. No. Not currently. Um, Craig, your audio is as good as it gets. Uh, possibly watch ba- uh, Possibly Watchbox is as good. The the when they have the actually even Tim and also when they have the two guys side by side, those mics that they're using on those little stands, they're not very good mics. They are they are um, condenser mics, but they're like fifty dollar mics. So. Uh, but they've got a quieter studio. See, my problem is I got this fan right here, li- literally right, you know, a little over a foot away from the mic is this fan blowing, uh, which I've got to uh, see. I have to be able to reach the switcher, right? And so I might be able to move it a little bit further away when I get some reroute some of this stuff. I might be able to get a little further away, but I like it to be right in front of me. Uh, just for switching purposes. Um, let's see. Uh, Clive is in the house. Clive, the watch wrangler, is in the house. His retirement didn't last long. Uh, it's good to see. Good to see Clive back in the saddle. Uh, Blue shirt Buddha. Um, any any more comments on the audio? So it's not terrible, as as I guess the, is what the consensus is. Ever since your show at Little Treasure, I've noticed the sound quality is not as good. Um, Let me think what changed. Hmm. Well, I did, I did, um, I got, I took the mix pre out of the loop because we were having problems with that crackling with the with the cable going in. I had to go to the mic input on that one because that doesn't have a line level out. So I've disconnected the Mix Pre 6. And the Mix Pre 6 has fantastic preamps. It's a fantastic field recorder. But it doesn't have line level out. And so that's why I went to I went back to the Behringer mixer, which is an inexpensive mixer that I've been using for the last several shows. And now I'm using this Asden, which by all accounts has better much better preamps in it than of course the Behringer. This is about a five hundred dollar field mixer. Um so anyway. I think we're trying to gild a lily anyway. Like I said, we've got the input issues on the Roland switcher. I've got to run the audio through the Roland switcher because that's the only way I can practically get the feed from the computer in and and get everything mixed to the live stream. I mean, if I could go straight from the Asden uh, to the Video Pro, that would probably be better, but I got to run everything through the Roland to to get everything to sync right. Um, Let's see here. and let's see no problem tansy okay tansy all right so we we need we need like three members of the wrench gang to vouch for this gentleman and we can give him a wrench if we we get some uh some uh folks to step up type one to make tansy part of the wrench gang dirt type one blue shirt buddha Typed one. Clive, Clive, uh, tapped one. Clive doesn't have a wrench right now. Did he give up his wrench? What, how come he doesn't have a wrench? I thought he had a wrench. Maybe he gave it up. Um, I guess they can refuse a wrench. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and give Tanziel a wrench this backfires on us then it, it is what it is okay so he's got a wrench he's got a wrench um, Craig he's he's a, a cardinal okay all right there you go uh, why doesn't Clive have a wrench he needs a wrench um, you know I, th- I th- I think there was a report that somebody was impersonating him. Um, how do we know this is the real Clive? H- how would we know that? That it's not an infiltrator, an impersonator. 
what do you think, folks? Should we take a chance? It might be, you remember in that movie Terminator where they had people that like pretended? <clears throat> Much appreciated uh, to the Wrench Gang and Clivers. Um, if it backfires, it's all Durr's fault. Okay. All right. So we'll make it Durr's fault. Okay, so what do you say, Carlos? What Step up, Carlos. What do you say? Should we assume that it's the real Clive in the house? Let's do a quick time check. See what time it is. It's seven minutes after the hour. Coming up on seven minutes after the hour. In these United States of America. <laughs> AC3 <laughs> CUX. <laughs> Oh, jeez. It's not going to backfire, Chip. Tenzil's a great guy and really knows his stuff. Okay, ask him Ask him <laughs> who is garbage fire. 100% um, <laughs> Clive. Okay. I said I'm, I'm getting out. Okay. So, um, only the real. We need him to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if he has Skype. He could Skype in if he uh, he could Skype in and show us like some kind of a watch that would prove it. Um, ask Clive if he has Skype. He could Skype in. He should have Skype. Every gentleman should have Skype. Um, ask Clive if he'll Skype into the show. What do you guys think about that? Uh, uh, let me let me compose it. Let me compose an email to Clive, and I'll give him my Skype handle. And if he doesn't have Skype, he should put it on his phone. Every gentleman should have Skype. Okay, so I'm emailing him my Skype handle, and he could call in to the show is the way we could do that, just like we had to do Carlos the other day. We had to verify it was the real Carlos, and he called in and showed us a date 840. That's how we got that verification handled. Um, this Clive impersonator has 2,900-ish subscribers. Impressive. Well, there you go. All right, so somebody verified by clicking through to him. Uh, <laughs> he's going to send an email with the words Aqua Terra. Oh, my goodness. Aqua Terra is pretty good. I, I'll, I'll give him that. I, Aqua Terras are pretty cool, um, I think. What's the, How thick are they now? A lot of the uh, Omegas have gotten a little bit thick lately. What do you guys think about that? About the thickness ep epidemic? Just checking my email here. Somebody, I made an offer on something to buy something, and uh, <laughs> and uh, this guy gave me a counter offer. No, I don't do counter offers, folks. You take my first offer and it. Other, otherwise, it's a done for deal. Okay, Clive, let's let's see, let's give Clive a, a wrench. Add moderator. There we go. Clivester's got a wrench. And um, <laughs> persona non grata <laughs> is in the in the house. Every gentleman should flash an omegle. Craig, I hope my headphone recommendation turn, turns out well for you. I hope it's comfortable. That's what I wanted. See, this one here, these are okay for a short period of time, but the, these these are too narrow, really. They, they kind of push on my ear. Maybe my ears are too big. What do you guys think? You think my ears are too big? Testing one, two. It sounds really good. It, to monitor in here, it sounds really good, really isolated. I mean, it just sounds great. Uh, very clear that these these preamps on on this mixer are very clean it, you're going to hear what you're going to hear you're going to hear the fan and and different things but 
it they the preamps are very clean I think uh, but anyway I can wear these for a while it's just they're not that comfortable so hopefully the ones the Sennheisers will be like killer comfortable that's what I'm hoping for uh, let's see he agreed the upgraded bracelet put it back into contention against the sub okay so I, th I think the new 300 mil okay uh, go shoot have a new diver that's 39.5 millimeters and 12 millimeters thick whoa that's getting there that's where it should be really now you think about it the older subs were nice and trim nice nice rounded case nice comfortable on wrist I mean they really had everything right then they of course they went and screwed it up with the maxi case but that's a whole another thing for a whole nother day um uh, Tanzil has a wrench what did I miss you missed a lot they were they lobbied heavily for him to get a wrench uh <laughs> Clive already hit Persada on Grotta with the wrench. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. We've already got wrench action in here. Has this thing gotten out of control? <laughs> Love the new model, Aquaterra. Unbeatable for the money. Great uh, teak dial with coaxial movement. How thick is it, though? MD in the house. There you go. Uh, they look good, Craig. A lot better than AC3's 1980s headphones. LOL. There you go. Well, no, these aren't. These are my Sony headphones. Uh, they're great monitors. And they're great for, like, telling if there's noise and stuff like that. But they're not comfortable to wear for a long time. I've got some Sennheisers ordered that are supposed to be more comfortable. We're, we, are, we will find out when they come. Uh, persona non grata was timed out by Clivester. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Um, oh, the Sony MDR V6 and 7506 are notorious for their uncomfortable ear pads. Some people swap the pads out for Burnanamic DT250 velour pads, which help a little bit. Still not super comfy. There you go. Cheat Town was the one that gave me the recommendation of the Sennheiser. So we will see what we will see. Those German ones are, are were recommended too, but I, I went ahead and got those. Uh, I guess Sennheisers are German too. I don't know where they're made though. I don't know if they're actually made in Germany. My Sennheiser um, wireless mics, believe it or not, are made in the USA. Some of their Sennheiser wireless mics are made in the USA. Can you imagine? Uh, it's a little chunky says the Clivester see I've really gotten spoiled and of course people laugh that oh it's a 9F movement and all this stuff but I've really gotten spoiled by how trim that watch is on the wrist I've showed, showed it to you guys and I'm not going to put it on right now but I've showed you guys how trim it is and how the lugs everything curves to the wrist and that goes right underneath my tightest dress shirts and of course it's only 39 mil and the bracelet is very trim as well which helps because remember the whole bracelet and everything needs to go underneath that cuff right now if you don't have tight shirt cuffs this is a non-issue it's just for me my a lot of my shirt cuffs on my dress shirts are fairly tight so I need a very trim watch to go underneath there and that one does the trick Archie uses Sennheiser HD 202s which are not bad Okay, well there you go. Now what was the model again at Chi Town that I ordered? I I don't remember. Uh, let me see. I'll ch I'll check here. I, well, I don't know if I can get in here and check or not. Um. Uh, w were they the HD two eighty Pro? Is that the ones that I got? I don't remember which ones I got. Um, let let us know in the chat which ones I ordered, Chi Town, because I can't pull up my order right now. Uh, 
let's see here um, everyone is uh, okay 9F GMT 9F GMT is an incredibly practical watch Tom Austin I think so I think it's a fantastic travel watch beat around watch do anything you want to do watch not worry about servicing ever watch yeah the only Sennheisers made in Germany are the or Orpheus 2 electrostatic headphones and the HD 800 series. HD 800 series is like the Rolex of the headphone world. Um, that's a shame. They make the rest, I guess, in China or somewhere like that. Uh, you still got your GS Diver, Craig. Here it is. It's on my wrist. There she blows. And it's just smoothing right along, keeping killer time. I wear it most of the time, to tell you the truth, especially in the summertime now that I'm not wearing, you know, the long dress shirts. I'll be wearing this most of the time. This puppy will come into play more in the winter when, when I have dress shirts on or when I'm, maybe when I'm traveling. Or sometimes I just switch off and wear it, but, but uh, in the summertime, it'll probably be this diver most of the time. Heavy use. Heavy use watch. Not abuse, but heavy use. Uh, contrarian horology everyone buying it's time to sell okay nine, okay we already read that one read that one uh, yeah most Sennheisers are made in China or Ireland you, you ordered the HD 598CS which I believe is made in China great quality though okay well we'll see we'll see hopefully they will be uh, Clive is bored with oil. I wish Clive would I really wish Clive would consolidate a little bit and get himself a day date I really think he could sport a day date and just rock rock the world with a day date after all he's a counselor at law for gosh sakes he should be rocking a day date I don't care if it's a day date 36 or 40 doesn't make any difference either one would look like boss on the boss on Clivester the boss uh, let's see I'm getting Grado American company headphones not really made for reference but great for enjoying music uh, let's see here <laughs> persona non grata what did I do wrong Clive I've got a wrench just to hammer me on another channel. I don't know. Yeah, he really did start hammering with that wrench. It, it, yeah. Um, Cheetown, California says grades are, are great for rock and jazz. Very bright sound. Yeah, he uh, Cheetown said he went down that the headphone rabbit hole. There you go. Hopefully he learned enough so that he gave me the right recommendation and I don't have to go down the rabbit hole very deep here. Uh, is your GF plus five minus five accurate? Does no, no. My th my GMT is the one with the blue dial. It looks black in this, but it's blue. Um, and no, it's plus minus ten. And let's pull up the world clock and see how accurate it is. If I if I have the world clock here anywhere, see if I can find the world clock. Got a bunch of other windows open here. Okay, here it is. Here's the world clock. Let's see if we can put this side by side. Okay, let's adjust this a little bit. And let's see how we're doing here on accuracy, folks. Get this as centered here. So let's see. 9, 10. And now, again, don't worry about it not hitting the hash marks. That's the camera angle, folks. If you look at it straight on in real life with your stereo vision, with your two eyeballs, it's hitting those markers every time. Trust me, it is. Uh, but here we go. We're, we're looking like... It's looking pretty, pretty much spot on to me. Now, you guys make the judgment call on that. But it's looking like to me like it's as close to spot on as you can get it. I mean, you could try setting it four times, and I don't think you're going to get it any closer than that you guys let me know in the chat what you think how close is that and we'll check it from time to time and we'll see uh, we'll see how that puppy's doing um, 
not abuse, but heavy use. There you go. Absolutely. Heavy use. So I put in the one, one of the, I put in one of the forums. <laughs> we'll come back to this. I, I put in one of the forums. Uh, <laughs> some guy asked how to clean a, a president bracelet. So I assume it's on a day date or something. I, I, it could be on a lady date or whatever, but it probably was a day date. You know, president bracelet. How to clean a president bracelet? I said, for years I cleaned mine with toothpaste and a toothbrush, and the one I had the longest was the eighteen two three eight. I had that nineteen years, bought it new, and I put up a picture of it that was taken about a year before I sold it, and uh, still looked fantastic. Right, the watch looked great. And I was like, sacrilege. I mean, I said, yeah, I cleaned it with a toothpaste and, and a toothbrush. <laughs> and I did. I mean, I didn't scrub it hard, you know, but especially inside, the inside of the bracelet and all where it gets like stuff gunk, gunked in there. I mean, I didn't clean it very often, right? So it would get, you know, you sweat and all that. I mean, I really, I actually wear my watches, folks, in all kinds of conditions and dust storms. I wear them out at the J Bar W Ranch and they're kicking up all that dust and, you know, they get dirty, right? And so, yeah, I cleaned them with uh, uh, toothpaste and a toothbrush. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> That's right. Um, Clive like, likes beating his wrench. Oh, no. Oh, no. You might get hit again with the wrench making comments like that. I can't travel any anymore without... Bo bows, no, no, it's canceling headphones. I gave mine away. I, I thought that they were kind of irritating, to tell you the truth. The way it, the way that electronic circuitry does the noise canceling, I'd much rather have just over the ear, really good isolating without that electronic stuff. It just didn't seem natural to me, but I, I think the newer ones are better. I had like the original ones. And I ended up giving them away to a friend of mine. Uh, Tom Austin in the house. I, uh, okay, I already read that one. I use Bose QC35 Bluetooth headphones. They never uh, get off my head. Chitown, California. It's spot on, says R. Wags. Uh, that's a nice uh, Rolex Explorer 2 homage. I think it actually looks better. Everybody says that, but I think it actually looks better, uh, to tell you the truth. And in, in person, I mean, if you see it in person, it's like the way the light plays off of that dial... I'm going to pull up the, uh, the photo I took the other day that was pretty freaking epic, if I do say so myself. Let me see if I can pull it up here and show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, and by the way, is the audio still holding up? Is it still sounding decent? Um, let me know. Let me know in the chat, because this is absolutely what we're supposed to be doing here, is testing, doing an audio test. Doing an audio test in the house... Let me see if I can find the particular photo in question. There was one particular photo that was pretty freaking cool. And now I can't find it. Where is it? I guess this one's close enough. Now that's not the one, but anyway, I'll show you this one. See see how that puppy... Um, uh, plays with the light um, that, that that is pretty freaking cool if you ask me I mean <laughs> I'm sorry but you you try to get a Rolex Explorer 2 to look like that go ahead and work at it a little bit see if you can get a Rolex Explorer 2 any Rolex Explorer <laughs> I don't care what it is See if you can get it to look like that, okay? T take a close look at that, okay, guys? S suck that in a little bit. Just a quick snapshot the other day. I was out wandering in the sun, out wandering around loose, and uh, and I saw the way the sun was, was catching that little puppy, and I, I figured I'd, I'd take a little snapshot of it. So what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about that uh, Chi Town, the new Sony MDR 1000 X series are outstanding at noise cancellation. Though I just don't find their cups deep enough. Yeah, I gotta have comfort. I gotta have comfort. I use the QC20. I think the wired ones. Uh, 
on some planes I use the plug adapter to plug into the seat. Okay. Persona non grata. I'm getting a low budget stereo setup. So far I have a Denon receiver and I'm looking to hook up to a Kenwood home theater amplifier. Do I need an equalizer as well? There you go. Well, Chi Town is the guy to take care of your audio situation for you. And Carlos audio is good. Sound is acceptable, says Ray. Uh, my temporary speakers for now are old uh, techniques loudspeakers. That's a brilliant blue, says Persona Non Grata. The indices look like clear crystals. It, it's pretty amazing looking. I, I, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I've owned Rolex watches for 40 freaking years, and I never had one to kind of do that. All right? Never had one kind of do that. They were always great watches. Don't get me wrong. We, we beat them. We wore them hard. You know, salt water, all kinds of conditions. We didn't care. We, ne we, didn't, we didn't take the watches off, folks. Um, didn't matter what we were doing. We were involved in some heavy, heavy-duty stuff back in the day. Uh, you know, 357 Magnum, <laughs> the percussion, you know, didn't hurt those uh, GMT Master 2s. Didn't hurt the Date 8s when I was wearing, sometimes I'd be wearing that, doing the same thing. Didn't hurt any of those Rolexes. They, they, they can take a beating, folks. They can take a beating. Um... The Yacht Master has a nice sunray effect in the sun, and the new glass chute diver also. Yeah, but it, is it quite as is it quite as interesting as that though? I mean, let's be straight up about this. And 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 trust me, in person that looked even better. It's hard to capture it in a photo. In person, it was it looked even better. But I, I, I yeah, I think it's hard to top that, folks, for any kind of sport watch. And think about it. You can buy that watch all day long for three grand. All day long for three grand. Uh, that's pretty impressive, I think. Give credit where credit is due, folks. Um, I just, I should, I just wish it was high beat or spring drive. They make one that's similar to, very similar, that is automatic. Um, I think it might be Japan only market, and it's one millimeter thicker. That's the downside. One millimeter thicker. But I was the same way when I first learned about 9F. I was like, no, I have no interest or whatever. You know, I was like a little over a year ago when I, when I, when I went to buy this watch. Steve, Steve wanted to show me some of the 9F watches. I, I was like, no, I just no interest. I didn't even look at them. And then I started learning more about them and started kind of researching them and so forth. And then, of course, I bought that 18-karat gold one that I had for a while. And um, I just, I think they're pretty cool now i've pretty much done a 180 on the 9f uh 9f pieces all right we're going to wrap this up here pretty soon i think this was a success just refresh my uh chat here i i think i think this was a successful test and um yeah, if anybody else has any questions, comments, whatever, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this puppy up. And I'm going to get something to eat. We'll give one more, one more shot at that. Actually, let's get one more shot at the uh, Asden uh, field recorder. No, it's not a recorder. I'm sorry, field mixer. Craig, what vintage is your shirt? This is just a fairly inexpensive golf shirt I don't know how old this one is um, it's not that old it might be 15 years old or something 10 15 years old um, but it's not like from the 1980s or whatever like a lot of my stuff is but it's at least 10 years old but it's a, it's a fairly inexpensive golf shirt I just had to throw something on because I was doing some exercises and stuff and I just I, I just had to put something on to do the show real quick here um, so that I just grabbed this this puppy. Um, a 9F is a worthy addition to any collection, in my opinion, says Tom. Yeah, I think so. I think that's right. All right, folks. Thanks, thanks for helping me out. Um, I'm going to leave the setup the way it is for now. Uh, I'm 
I'm pleased that it's not any worse than it was, and I'm pleased that it seems to be pretty stable, because before we were having stability issues, where later in the show we'd get some problems and I'd have to like wiggle the cable and, you know, it was really, really janky. Um, so m maybe now at least it's stabilized, okay? It may not be perfect, but at least it's stabilized. Uh, Dolly, the mic setup is pretty great, but I would say it sounds clearer when you're a little further away from the mic without sacrificing volume. So, so are you saying that I don't need to be... Okay, so if I'm about right here, let me put it a little off axis like this, because it would be a little bit further away from the sound, uh, from the blower. How does this sound uh, from a standpoint of the level, because it, it would be good to be able to talk a little bit off axis like this and, and have it be pointed a little bit more away from the fan. So let me know how it sounds now, testing one, two, three, if that is a good uh, position or if I'm actually too far away from the mic now or too much off axis. Uh, let me know what that sounds like, and I'll wait for your report because I know there's a delay. Uh, let's see. Have a good evening. That's our Wags in the house. Uh, he's probably hanging out down by the lake. So there's that. Um, Bitcoin seems to have stabilized after that drop. That drop... Oh, our Wags, can you do the math? 8,300. I think it in that flash sale, I think it dropped down to... Was it 6,300? Was that the low? Or 6,500? Uh, how much? What percentage was that? Was I right? Was it 40%? Uh, let's see here. Uh, sounds fine. Sounds good to me. I think being pointed at you is clearer, but less boomy than before, which is good. Okay. All right. So you think I should leave it like this? Let me see what it sounds like in the monitors. So you think I should leave it like this? Testing one, testing one, testing one. You think I should leave it like this? Huh. Sounds okay in the monitors. Um, okay. Well, it sounds good. I mean, I think we're good enough. Uh, what else did I ask? Did I just ask something? Waiting for an answer. Um, oh, the, the loss. Okay, so let's do some math here. Uh, let's do some math. Oh, excuse me. Hmm, time check. Okay, I'm going to do some math. I'm going to take um, 8,300. Um... Oh no, that would have been down to 4980. So we'd have had to go down to like 5000 to have 40%. So we didn't hit the 40% target that I was looking for. We might have another pullback. We might not be done, folks. I was looking for 40% pullback. So um yep, sounds good. Day Lee says, yep, sounds good. Well, that's good to know. Off axis a little bit there. All right, well, we're going to wrap, whoops, put the phone away. I got to use that to wrap, the, wrap this puppy up. Thanks, everybody, for uh, helping out with this test. Where the heck is it? Get in here. A successful test, I say. Okay, and we are going to wrap this puppy up. Hey, click subscribe, click the little bell. Oh, and join my group. Join the Mid-Atlantic TV group on Facebook. Mid-Atlantic TV. Created a new group. We're going to be sharing some stuff in there. So Mid-Atlantic TV, go ahead and share that. I mean, join that or whatever you do. Whatever you do on that Facebook thing.
the first stream where it's not 5 a.m. here, <laughs> Tom in the house. Bitcoin is currently at 75.75. Yeah, it worked its way back up. Uh, went down to about, was it 63 or 6,500 was that low in that flash sale, that long wick? Some people got some good buys. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if we have another pullback. I don't think we are out of the woods yet. I, I, I think we might be looking at another pullback, our wags. I think we might be looking at another pullback. But let's see. We'll, we'll see. Time will tell the tale. There's never a dull moment with Bitcoin. Never a dull moment. Completing this event. Let's see. I've got a wrench and then bailed. <laughs> Persona non grata. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see what he does with the wrench. If he doesn't, if he's up to no good, we'll we'll repop. We'll repossess the wrench. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We're going to complete this event.